Hi everyone, welcome to day 20. Woo! We made it thus far. God has been so kind to us. I hope you're enjoying the Bible study and the prayer meetings. And I hope that you are already experiencing the goodness of God that satisfies early. Okay, uh, 90 minus 20 days of the seventy days. So we still have a long way to go. But this is doable. And of course, the Lord is helping us. So to this story, ha, ah, Jesus Christ. I saw mistakes. And I kept asking myself, what area of my life am I behaving like this? We see a man whose birth was prophesied by an angel. I mean, a full-blown angel came all the way to tell a woman and her, and her husband, because the woman went to call her husband eventually, and the angel made himself known to tell her they're going to have a son, a special kind of son. Not just any son, a son that will operate in the spirit of might in the way nobody else has ever operated. Ah, the only thing that they need of this boy is that they will not cut his hair. Now, this guy starts growing up, and at some point, the Lord wanted to deal with the Philistines. The prophecy at this birth, look at Judges 1. It said this, it said it will begin the deliverance of Israel. First, let me clear this. Most people debate that, oh, Samson was cut short. I don't really think so. Um, yes, in a way, considering how it went, but they didn't fulfill his, his destiny. I may think so too, because the Bible says he will begin the deliverance of Israel. God already knew that that weakness was in Samson. God already knew that that mistake he will make it. God already knew that this is how this guy will end. So his destiny was beginning. So he said he will completely deliver Israel. So when we look at people's scroll, let's somehow see the distinct sentence that is about that destiny. It's right there in Judges 13. I beg your pardon, not Judges 1. That's what we're reading from today. So he said he will begin the deliverance of Israel. And to the best of my knowledge, I will say that something fulfilled his calling. So back to the story of the day, the deadly mistake. First of all, we see Samson on his way to marry the Philistine woman. The Bible says God has stirred that desire because he was looking for an opportunity to confront the Philistines so that he will use Samson to show them pepe for what they've done to Israel. It was God that stirred that. And then Samson goes in there. On their way going, a lion attacked. He fought that lion, killed the lion. When they were traveling, um, I think some days back or something like that, um, he, he brought by to check that lion. You know, because the first time he was going to see the girl, that was when he killed the lion. The parents now were already, you know, in front and he, was, he branched by and touched the lion. I found that there was corn in the carcass of that and the bone marrow of the lion. He did not tell his parents where he got it from. They just said, hmm, sweet, sweet. Everybody said honey was sweet. They enjoyed their life. You see, now he sets up a riddle for the parents of the family of this girl. We see this woman. Brother Rice Samson, do you want the loss of the Philistines to kill my father, to shut down my father's house? And yes, the Philistines, when they threatened like that, they really would have done that to, you know, the girl. But this woman did not really know what Samson was capable of. She didn't really know that Samson could deliver her and her family. And when she begins to give pressure to Samson, and then Samson does what Samson tells her, the meaning of his riddle. She goes back to them and she tells them. And then Samson said, if you hadn't plowed with my heifer, if you had not played with my animal, would you have known my story? Would you have understood the meaning of my video? And then Samson went out into the forest, set foxes. Do it. I saw fox out here one night. I was like, this was around 2 a.m. I just pray and I saw fox like this kind of animal. It's not a, it looks like a dog, but it's not a dog. And it was by the tail and there's no textbook we used to see all these animals. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm not Joe Wild. I'm like, ah, fox care, you know. That's the kind of wild animal. So he brought these scriptures to life. Something paired them in Zeus, set them on fire, released them to go and burn the sticks of Philistines to get back. Again, this is about picking something now we talked about the last time. How did Samson not realize that Delilah was about to do exactly what that first wife did? Because Samson came back with that vengeance. In fact, the Bible tells us that he just even finished having sex with the prostitutes and they came against him. And now at the gate of the city, he finished them. Fornication did not remove the anointing because that was not the area of covenant. I'm not saying that if you're a minister, you should not be sleeping around. Oh, yo, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. But this is Samson's story, right? And we see how, we, how, how it plays out. The spirit of mind was attached to a covenant. God, when he starts taking you seriously, 
in your work with him will come. He will come to strike a deal with you. That consecration is usually the secret of whatever operation you operate in this life or whatever height God will use you to do. Some of the things that believers do, some of the realms they are operating, you might find somebody that is doing so well, for instance, maybe in crypto or maybe IT. It's not because they have sense too much. It's not because they really know how to trade for the crypto guys. It's not really because they are so intelligent. It might just be that there is an area of their life that is consecrated to God because God demanded. It's not you that you can decide though, God will honor it. But most times it's God that initiates that consecration. God will tell you what he wants you to offer. That's what makes your altar potent. Then you will not offer that thing. Don't please don't, don't play with it. I don't know how Samson do not remember that the last time they plowed with his heifer, they really dealt with him. Because he, you know this thing did not touch him because it's about close. Other men died. And he gave them, he went and kept the tip of the, of you, I think, you know, other people and gave them their clothes and, and dealt with them by sending folks back to fire their, their, their farm. And then we find Samson one time, he was thirsty. The Bible said he prayed. He said to God, have you given me this great miracle and you will not give me water to drink? And God opened up a well for him and he drank. Now, Samson, we see him. Playing, ten ten, ten ten, close, open, close, open with Auntie Delilah. You do not remember the last time. See, Auntie keeps over now. Remember the last time that they played rough play with you? How it went? You know, one of the mistakes of Samson was overconfidence. That's why Bible always sound alarm. Let it that things stand. Take heed lest he falls. Don't feel that, ah, oh, I can get back to my prayer water and deal with it. So, I always tell you, choose your battles. So. God is powerful. God delivers. But auntie, uncle, choose your battles. It's not everything that you're allowed to stir up into it. Please don't cross lines. Some people, the name of ginger, have killed themselves inside this Christianity. You say God is powerful. Holy Ghost fire is born. You're going to be putting yourself in the just send you. Better follow the authority of the Lord. Though, because you can be a casualty, no matter how anointed you are. If you're outside the jurisdiction that your covenant covers, be careful. Don't be overly confident. Another mistake Samson made I, was the time of his death. The Bible says his, his hair began to grow back. At this point, Samson understood. Maybe the first time when he told Delilah, he did not really understand that where the hair goes. You know that kind of thing that the hair has never gone because in all the circumstances, ah, every time I shake, the anointing will come back and will deal with them. This time Mandela has removed the head through through. He now said, I will go out and before and shake. You know, there's a way you can be you can be used to the anointing. You think that it's living in your body. You can be so used to the anointing, think that the anointing is my anchor chick perpetually. Even if I wash it ten times, it cannot go. My dear, if the thing inside you quenches, the Bible says quench on the spirit, he can quench. Mm. All it goes is to quench. Like you will just leave you. The Bible says, I will never leave nor forsake you. So he stays around waiting for you to open your heart. But you see, his oppression in you can be quenched. So um, something don't feel that like, oh, I can just go out and just ginger like before and do the fight and it don't have to be in his end. Ah, he pay me, oh. They plucked his eyes. He's not saying that. You know, let's, let's maim him. Let's talk out of his legs. He went to touch eyes. Eh? That eye used to use and see all the fine guests in among us. Let's even use and see and come back and marry again. He removed his eyes. I said he promoted Delilah and her family, gave them portions and all of that. Then this second mistake Samson made, he prayed, let me die with the Philistines. No matter the mistake you make, please don't use your head to write your story to the end. I somehow stopped imagining what might have happened had Samson had said, destroy this Philistine but deliver me. I mean, this he had prayed before God opened water where there was no water. Pray that prayer now like this. I say, Holy Ghost, please let this, let my house open up and produce water. Think of it as Because you have water, no, there are other sources. But when there's nothing, 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 you see God's hand will operate. So the God that answered that psalm to do the impossible of giving him well where there was a dry ground, could he not have removed something from that building? So could he not have surrounded or protected something? Yes, he would have lived the rest of his life blind, but he would have still had mites. And someone made the Holy Ghost with that. Someone, someone helped, you know, that he can still do all God has called him to do, even with a blind sight. Number three, don't make the mistake of ending your life before the Lord wills. 
no matter what you go through, don't make that mistake. If you are willing to rebuild your altar, to restore your covenant with God, to respect your consecration, then God is ready to get back in business with you. These mistakes of Samson really broke my heart. Like David said, how are the mighty falling? Publish it not in God. Let no ear hear it. That Samson, the one that dealt with animals and men, have not died in the Philistines. Yes, the Bible says that he killed more Philistines in his death than he did in all his lifetime. And he judged Israel for a long time. That's not how I want to die. I do not want to die in the claps of my enemies, even if it means dying with them. I don't want to be in their circles. I don't want to be the one they mock. How about you? Don't joke with your consecration. Don't play tent with the devil. Another mistake something made was to undermine his enemies. The biggest mistake we made to us believers is to you look at an agent, you know this person is an agent, and you open your arms wide and embrace. It doesn't matter. Just to say we should love each other. Scripture says, be wise as a serpent. Once the Holy Ghost flags somebody, my dear, don't pretend about it. You can use diplomacy and deal with them. But don't deceive yourself. Give God, set up protective structure. Once God flags somebody in your spirit, stop taking chances. Some of you are too porous. Everybody is your best friend. Everybody is in your house. Everybody is on your, your WhatsApp sales. Everybody is, yes, we like to let people see us. But if you know you have a large audience, please protect some information. Everything that goes outside. Don't undermine the enemy. I used to tell you guys, Satan entered Eden, the perfect Eden, where God made all things with the mighty Adam and Eve. He found me. Jesus finished hot fasting, 40 days and 40 nights. Have you done it before? Maybe you have. Jesus did it. Inside the end of the fasting, he had a meeting with devil. That's the appointment to go use the fast. So, see all this fire, fire. They don't they deceive, they don't they win Satan by fire. Forgive my pigeon. It's not by fire that they win. There are principles that makes it more powerful than your fire, fire prayer. Respect your consecration. Don't mess with it. See that boy dancing around you. See that girl dancing around you. If the Holy Ghost is warning you, watch it. Watch it. They will say, hey, you're too spiritual. Yeah, you too do. You're too that. Hey, let me be too something and protect my calling. Protect my destiny. Protect my life. Than to die with the enemies of my destiny. It's not my portion. And I don't wish it for you. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.